Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Juma Mubarak to everyone. Just a few reminders and updates for upcoming events. Um, first and foremost, Irvine Masjid will be holding an Arabic grammar class for complete details. Uh, pick up a flyer at the publications area, inshallah. Uh, tafsir for this Sunday with Dr. Siddiqui will be at 12 noon, followed by Sheikh Shahid, who will hold his concluding classes um, on April 10th. This evening, we will be hosting the mayor of Irvine, Sister Farah Khan. She'll be joining us along with a special guest, the Santa Ana Mayor, Vincent Sarmiento. Please plan to be here by 7 p.m. Pray Maghrib at the Masjid, enjoy a barbecue dinner. There will be boba drinks. This will be a good opportunity for us to discuss issues that are important to us and to also help out with our civic duties. Uh, it encourages us to participate in the community in general. Alhamdulillah, Ramadan is approaching and this is going to be our first time back together in close proximity since the pandemic started. Um, so please um, get familiar with the, all the programs that the Masjid has been planning for Ramadan. There's a lot to, to share and it can't be done just through announcements. So please, if you get a chance on your phones or go on, a, on the website, it's ramadan.isocmasjid.org. All the information will be there. You can find out prayer times, which events we'll be hosting, any special talks, qiyams, donation opportunities, uh, iftar sponsorships. There'll also be banquet tickets that you can purchase. Again, that's ramadan.isocmasjid.org. And ISOC will be holding daily iftars, but this is only possible through your generous donations. So this will, again, the first time that we're coming back together since the pandemic and having iftars together. If you remember last year, alhamdulillah, we were able to pray tarawees together. Now we'll be able to also enjoy meals together. So uh, please, for those who can, generously donate so that we can continue to have these special events at the masjid during Ramadan. The much-awaited much Ramadan calendar is also available. You can go outside and grab that calendar at the ISOC booth. Please take one per family. And um, ISOC will be hosting, oh sorry, OCS will be hosting their Ramadan gala. That'll be on Friday, April 8th at the Great Wolf Lodge. Support the Islamic education in your community. Details are available in this week's newsletter. If you haven't already subscribed to the newsletter, please do so. There's a lot of great information that you'll be shared with, that will be shared with you each week. And finally, ISOC will be holding the Ramadan fundraising banquet on Saturday, April 16th at the Anaheim Marriott. This will be with Dr. Siddiqui, Imam Zaid Shakir, and Brother Hussam Arush, um, and also our new principal for the Sunday School Insight Academy, Sister Amina Salami. Tickets can be purchased online. Again, you can purchase those tickets at ramadan.isocmasjid.org. Come together with your friends and family. And please visit the Zakat Foundation booth outside. And learn more about all their great work that they're doing. They're outside after you're done with your prayers. Please visit their booth and learn more about what they're, they're contributing to the community. Uh, and again, please stay connected with all the work that we're doing at the masjid outside of ramadan.isoc masjid.org. You can follow us on the face on our Facebook page as well as our Instagram page for complete details on events that are coming up. And again, subscribe to that newsletter. And finally, we'll be praying Salat al Janazah for a senior community member, Brother Farooq Shah. So please stay back after the the Fard prayers and, and we'll make that Janazah prayer inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. 
اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اي على الصلاه حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله حبيبه وصفيه أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح لهذه الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من اهتدى بهديه وسار على دربه إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعاذ لله وإياكم منها آمين معاشر المسلمين الكرام My dear respected brothers and sisters Let me introduce myself first My name is Taha Hassan I'm the Imam and Director of the Islamic Center of San Diego, Masjid Abu Bakr. And I'm sure that many of you, when you visit the beautiful San Diego, you stop by Masjid Abu Bakr. And you are always welcome to visit our Masjid over there. And it's a great honor and privilege to be here today, on this blessed day, to uh, give this reminder for myself first and for everyone. And I would like to start also by uh, apologizing from our dear scholar, Dr. Siddiqui, that I am speaking in his presence. This is something that is not easy usually, but I have to do it anyway. Jazakumullah khair. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has overwhelmed us with his blessings, with his ni'am. And he told us in the Quran that if you try to count the ni'am that I have given you, you will never be able to do so. We cannot count the ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. And one of these ni'am 
is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with blessed seasons, blessed times, blessed months, days, and nights. And our duty is to recognize, to know which days, which nights, which months, and moments are blessed than others so we can take that opportunity and increase in doing whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to do. A blessed season means a time when the ajr, when the reward is multiplied. A blessed season is a time when the sins are forgiven. A blessed season is a time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves as many people as he wills. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include all of us among those who are forgiven, those who are blessed, and those who are saved. And one of the blessed seasons, my dear brothers and sisters, is just around the corner. Actually, a week from now, we will start the blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to reach the month of Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a good health and accept from us whatever good deeds that we will do in Ramadan and forgive us for whatever sins and mistakes and shortcomings that might happen in Ramadan. And the question that we ask ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters, is whether we are ready to welcome this guest. Ramadan is a guest. Are we ready to welcome this guest? Are we ready <coughs> to enjoy the days and nights of Ramadan? Are we ready to have this coming Ramadan as a spiritual purification opportunity? Are we ready to change ourselves for the better in this coming Ramadan? The secret of having a meaningful Ramadan is planning and setting our goals. Planning and setting our goals. In almost everything we do in our lives, when we want to travel, when we want to start a business, to start whatever, always we plan because we don't want to waste our time. We don't want to start something without planning, without setting goals, and then we fail. We don't want to lose resources and time and energy. That's why we plan for everything. We set our goals and objectives for everything. Why don't we do this when we have such a blessed time coming up soon? So we will get benefit and we will feel at the end of Ramadan that really this Ramadan helped us to become better Muslims, better human beings, more committed to our deen, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, closer to our community members and our brothers and sisters everywhere. This is the opportunity, my dear brothers and sisters, that we have to take at this time and failure in doing so will result to having Ramadan no different than any other month of the year. We will not feel any positive change in our lives after Ramadan and we will be deprived from, from the goodness, from al-khayr in Ramadan. So how do we do that? How can we welcome Ramadan in the best way possible? How can we make this coming Ramadan the best Ramadan ever? I would like to share you, my dear brothers and sisters, to share with you few practical simple steps. I like to be practical. I, I, I like to, to suggest and adopt something simple and practical, doable, that each and every one of us can do it according to our own individual capacity. And this is what I'm going to do, inshallah. Number one, what should we do to welcome Ramadan and to have it the best Ramadan in our lives? Number one, understanding the value of Ramadan. What does it mean? And this is very important. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, if you give a diamond, a piece of very expensive diamond 
to an infant, to a child, to a baby, most likely he will throw it away or through the window or whatever. Why? Because he doesn't know the value of this diamond. The same thing happens to us if we don't know the value of Ramadan. We won't bother ourselves to do as much as we can to show the best of ourselves. So what's, what's so special about Ramadan? My brothers and sisters, Ramadan is the time of forgiveness. It's the time of mercy. It's the time when the gates of Al Jannah are open and the gates of hellfire are closed. And the devils are chained, locked up. It's the time, a month when there is one night which is better than a thousand months. In Ramadan, one farida, one obligatory act of worship equals 70 farida, seven zero. Which means in Ramadan, when you fast one day or you pray Fajr or Dhuhr or Asr, Maghrib or Isha, it's as if you have done that act of worship, that ibadah, that faridah, 70 times. In Ramadan, a sunnah equals the ajr, the reward of faridah. When you enter the masjid in Ramadan and you pray two rak'ah of tahiyyat al masjid, it's as if you have performed an act of faridah, ibadat faridah. This is the value of Ramadan. That's why Allah uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, "Ala inna lillahi nafahat fata'arradu laha." Indeed, Allah has blessed moments that He gives you, so take advantage of them. Don't let Ramadan go without taking the best and making yourself the best you can during the month of Ramadan. Wafi dalika faliyatanafil mutanafisun. The second thing that we should consider is a dua to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us reach the month of Ramadan not only reach the month of Ramadan but be in a good health and being able to do as much as we can Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as it was reported in hadith Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu Whenever Rajab comes, he used to say, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa ballighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, bless for us Rajab and Sha'ban and help us to reach the month of Ramadan. Imagine since the time of Rajab, we keep saying every single day, Allahumma ballighna Ramadan, Allahumma ballighna Ramadan, Allahumma ballighna Ramadan. Khalas, we, we will get into the mood of Ramadan. Ramadan will become part of our daily lives. We shouldn't wait until somebody comes to surprise us, telling us, brother, do you know that tomorrow is the first day of Ramadan? Really? I didn't hear about it. You know, how come? Don't be like that. Get ready spiritually, intellectually, to welcome Ramadan by having, you know, this dua part of your daily ibadah every day. Number three, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. To thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Be among a shakirin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran that very few among my servants are thankful. وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ shakur. Let's be among those few people who always express thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially when we realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extended our lives and tonight is the first night of Ramadan, tomorrow we will be fasting. Al-Imam al-Nawawi rahmatullahi alayhi said, I'lam annahu yustahabu liman tajaddadat lahu ni'matun zahira aw indafa'at anhu ni'matun zahira an yasjuda shukran lillahi ta'ala. And know that whoever has a blessing coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something good to him or to her, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away something bad from their way, to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sujood al shukr and always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us that if we keep being thankful to him, Allah azza wa jal will increase our ni'am. in shakartum la'azidannakum. Number four, being and, and showing 
happiness and joy for the coming of Ramadan and share this happiness al-farah wal ibtihaj bi qudumi Ramadan share this happiness and this is the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam you know every time Ramadan comes rasulullah sallallahu used to congratulate his companions telling them laqad ja'akum shahru ramadan the month of ramadan has come to you shahrun mubarak a blessed month kataba allahu alaykum siyamah allah has prescribed upon you to fast it fihi tuftahu abwabu aljinan wa tughlaqu abwabu aljahim in it the gates of aljanna paradise will be opened and the gates of hellfire will be closed what to suffer to shayateen and the devils will be chained fihi laylatun khayrun min alf shahr in it in ramadan there is one night which is a better than a thousand months man hurima khayraha faqad hurim the miserable one is the one who will miss the the goodness and the khayr and the baraka of that night which is laylatul qadr these are the words that the prophet sallallahu used to share with his companions radiyallahu anhum we should do the same thing and i really like when ramadan approaches for example and you see members of the community exchanging emails and text messages and beautiful cards ramadan mubarak ramadan kareem when you see these emails coming to you in your phone or computer don't say that oh this is too much i cannot reply to every no be happy reply as much as you can all these emails and messages will create a beautiful atmosphere in the community everyone knows that ramadan is coming soon everyone knows that people are congratulating you and do the same to your family members to your loved ones to the members of the community showing happiness and joy that ramadan is coming soon and maybe one of the things that mashallah a lot of families in the community do is uh, decorating their homes and getting the kids involved in this and there are so many materials uh, uh, available online just go and order a few things and let your kids decorate your home with you know a lot of arts and and crafts ramadan mubarak ramadan kareem and all that this is something very important to keep the beauty of ramadan and the sacredness of the time alive in the hearts and the minds of this generation number five having an individual and a family plan sitting together as family members and talking about what are we going to do this ramadan anything special what's our program daily program in ramadan for sure it's gonna be different than any other month of the year and try to have a program daily program for the whole family set your goals what do we want to achieve this ramadan this is very important my dear brothers and sisters whether it is qiyamul layl or program of sadaqa program of uh, inviting loved ones or so, anything that will make ramadan a special time for every single family in the community number six learning the basic rules of fasting fiqh siyam the basic rules of fasting and I, i'm not trying to say you know go seek the knowledge of fiqh siyam to become mufti or or al no the minimum knowledge that can enable you to have ramadan with no mistakes by not doing something that might void your siyam and this is something affordable this is something easy there is no excuse for any one of us at this time at this moment in this community there are so many presentations and khawatir short talks and reminders and seminars and how to welcome ramadan you know talking about and you have access to your imams to the knowledgeable people in the community there are so many materials and booklets and brochures and websites and apps and everything it's always good to refresh our knowledge our information about ramadan so we won't make mistakes or do something that might jeopardize or might void our fasting and there are 
things that people ask every single year at the beginning of Ramadan. That's fine. If you are confused, go and ask somebody who knows, somebody you trust in the community. That's okay. Don't start Ramadan with you know, that ignorance. You know, I, I don't know whether it is permissible or not. I don't know whether, don't do this. And we have the means and the ways to learn and educate ourselves. Number seven, the sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, Ramadan is the excellent opportunity we have every year to evaluate ourselves. Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Hold yourselves accountable before you will be held accountable. Hold yourselves accountable here in this dunya before you will be held accountable over there in the hereafter. Sit by yourself. Think about what you have done, good and bad. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the good things that you have done. And be ready to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever you have done wrong. Start a new page with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And keep in mind that the doors of forgiveness, the doors of rahmah, the doors of acceptance are always open. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for us. As long as we are ready to repent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to accept the repentance. As long as we are ready to seek forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so generous, so kind to us. And He is ready to forgive us. As long as we are ready to do the first step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to come to us. Ramadan is the best opportunity to do this. Not only in terms of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also our relationship with the surrounding environment. Our siblings, our parents, our kids, our relatives, our neighbors, our community members. If we have done anything wrong with anyone, wallahi, this is the right time to repent. And to start a new page with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a new page with one another. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us and repent all of you, all you who believe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you may succeed. And number eight, the last one is sharing Ramadan. Ramadan is a blessing. Don't be selfish and keep it for yourself. Don't be selfish and keep the beauty of Ramadan for yourself. Spread the beauty of Ramadan around you with your neighbors with your co-workers with your colleagues with your classmates with your non-muslim friends sometimes we assume that oh they know about ramadan of course they know about ramadan guess what the vast majority of people they just heard about a word ramadan they have no idea what's the significance of ramadan what's the impact of Ram what does it mean to be fasting what does it mean to, to, to experience and to witness Ramadan? They have no idea. This is the opportunity for us to share the beauty of Ramadan. And there are also so many ways and means how we can do that. And I would like to recommend you a beautiful website that I always go to because there are so many good materials in that website, soundvision.com. Soundvision.com. There are so many things for all ages for individuals for families for youth for elders for people who go to school students for you know how to share ramadan with your class how to share ramadan with your co-workers how to show uh, to, to share ramadan with your boss at work to let him know or let her know that this coming month is called the month of ramadan i will be fasting i will be doing this and that a lot of things that we can do my dear brothers and sisters people are eager to learn about the beauty of Islam. It's up to us whether we are ready to reach out to them and share with them the beauty of our deen and the beauty of Ramadan. Yeah. والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وصل اللهم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد 
My dear brothers and sisters, I'm here today on behalf of Zakat Foundation of America. And I'm sure that many of our community members uh, are aware of this organization. They know about this organization because Zakat Foundation of America has been around since 2001. And today there is no fundraising, but I'm just sharing with you some things that Zakat Foundation of America is doing. Since its beginning in 2001, Zakat Foundation of America has been working in about 40 countries in the world, helping Muslims, especially here in North America, to use and to send and to utilize their zakat in the best way possible and to help them delivering their zakat to the real people in the world who really need this zakat, which is an obligation upon us. In addition to the zakat, whatever sadaqat we give, to make sure that whatever we give fi sabilillah will go to the people who are in need. And for this coming Ramadan, Zakat Foundation is working on three projects. The first one is the food security program. And all of us, we know, because of the COVID for two years and because of what's going on in Ukraine, it's affecting the food security almost all over the world, especially in the underdeveloped countries. And the program this Ramadan is to provide food to the Muslim families who are in need of our help all over the world, inshallah. And the food basket by per family cost $60, $60 that you can feed the entire family, subhanAllah. The second program is the orphan sponsorship. The orphan sponsorship. And Zakat Foundation of America has a unique way to do that. It costs $50 a month or $600 a year to sponsor an orphan. And 100% of whatever we give to sponsor an orphan, 100% will go to those orphans. And the fourth, uh, the third program is Afghanistan. And all of us, we are aware about the situation at this moment inside Afghanistan. Zakat Foundation of America has workers on the ground in Afghanistan doing this work on our behalf. And I would like you to underline on our behalf because whether Zakat Foundation of America or any other Muslim relief charitable organization that might reach out to this community or to my community or to any other community. They are doing this work on our behalf. They are doing this work on our behalf because we are supposed to send our zakat, our sadaqa to those people. But we cannot, as an individual, I cannot do that. So there is someone else who is doing this on my behalf. We trust them and we trust the work that they are doing. This is something that we should keep in mind all the time. And there is a, um, a table outside. Please feel free to stop by after Salah to get more information about Zakat Foundation of America. Asalullah tabaraka wa ta'ala an yaj'alana wa jami'an min al-ladhina yastami'oon al-qawla fa yattabi'oon ahsanah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of us, to bless our family members, our loved ones, our brothers and sisters all over the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to reach the month of Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us, all of us, a good health and accept from us everything good we will do in Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it the best Ramadan in our lives, but not the last Ramadan in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always help us to do that which is right and stay away from that which is wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep guiding all of us and keep us on a sirat al-mustaqeem, the straight path, until the moment we meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he brought us together in this wonderful masjid, wonderful place, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us together in al-firdaws al-a'la with our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rizuqna attiba'ah. 
وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظنا بما تحفظ به عبادك الصالحين اللهم احفظنا وإخواننا وأخواتنا بما تحفظ به عبادك الصالحين اللهم احفظ شبابنا وشباب المسلمين اللهم احفظ شبابنا وشباب المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وقوموا إلى صلاتكم وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير استو استقيموا واعتدلوا يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء نحوا سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر النفعة الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها لشق الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين 
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل توثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May Allah bless our uh, Imam Taha, mashallah. A very beautiful message for the blessed month of Ramadan. We should all be ready, inshallah, excited for the coming of this month. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah bless you and reward you. Uh, we'll have this dua for several people and we'll, inshallah, praying Salatul Janaza for Brother Farooq Ali Shah, a senior member of our community, loves to come to ISOC with his wife always arriving ahead of time and here all the time, greeting their staff and the members, everybody. May Allah bless him and reward him, inshallah, and give him the place in Jannah and give patience to his family. Uh, please pray for uh, uh, people who are not well, baby Muhammad Harun, our brother Muhammad Rafi, brother Naqshuddin Moman, brother Hassan Bandakchi, and sister Amina Busho, and also Make dua for our office assistant, accounting office assistant, Sister Michelle Ramirez. She is not well and we're going to have some surgeries. May Allah SWT bless her and give her shifa. And give shifa to all the people who are not well, whether those whose names we have mentioned and those whose names we have not mentioned. All of them, may Allah give them shifa. Allahumma shri marda al-Muslimin. Allahumma shri marda na wa marda al-Muslimin. Make dua maqfira for Sister Naseem Banu. Brother Aqil Ahmed Siddiqui, Sister Noor Hamza Kuku, our brother Mustafa Kuku's sister, and also Sister Zuhra Fahmi. She used to be here and went to India to visit her family, and suddenly she passed away there. May Allah bless all of them and give them maqfara, give them jannah, inshallah, give patience for their families. So we'll be praying Salatul Janazah for Brother Farooq Ali Shah, and uh, his burial will be at the, uh, the Forest Lawn Memorial in Cyprus. And our condolences to the whole family. There is Sister Fatima Almir, 
Her burial will be on Monday. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah bless all of you. Any family members of Brother Farooq here? Please, you can come here in the front area. There's uh, two janazas. Uh, one is for a sister, Sister Fatima. Her video will be on Monday, but the janaza is here for Salat. Inshallah. Okay. Uh, from both the families. Both family members, please yeah. come closer. Three people in yes, yes. Salat al four takbirat. At the first takbir, raise your hand. Then hold them as you do in your salat. Recite Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik or Surat al-Fatiha. And then second takbir, after that, you say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma barik ala Muhammad. And then third takbir, after that, a special dua for the maghfirah of the persons who passed away. And for all of us, Allahumma gfil hayyina wa mayyitina wa shahidina wa ghaibina. Or you simply say, Allahumma gfil lahuma wa rahamhuma. And then four takbir and salam on both sides. Barakallahu fikum. Allahu Akbar. الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد الله أكبر اللهم صل Allahu Akbar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allahumma akfilahu wa akfilahu wa akfilahu wa akfilahu. Allahumma akfilahu wa akfilahu wa Allahumma akfilahu wa akfilahu wa akfilahu. Allahumma ati ahlam wa sabra wa salawan. Tadduk ruham wa antakhirullah. Sallallahu ta'ala ala akhari khalqih Muhammad wa ahli. Barik Allahu fikum wa azamullahu ajrakum wa ahsan a'zaikum wa ghafra li mayyitikum wa mayyitikum. May Allah bless you all. Inshallah, if you give us a few minutes, people pray sunnah and then bath their body.